Hi everyone. Today we're going to have fun drawing a realistic goldfish. Thank you to Lisa for your、um, suggestion. I think that this is going to be so fun. So I hope that you can enjoy drawing along with me. I'm using my watercolors today. I feel like a goldfish is just begging to be painted in watercolors. And so, but you can use whatever you want, whatever you have at hand, whether it's pencil crowns or paints or cookies, whatever you want. Whatever we do use, remember that the best drawing is thoughtful drawing. So no matter what you do, do it with with thought and care and consideration. We are going to be drawing an orange goldfish, and because we are, are going to use up our、um, our watercolors, we don't want an ugly pencil line, but we might want to make corrections to our fish as well before we paint. So draw with your pencil, and then you can outline like we have done before with a pencil crown, either an orange or a red, something that's going to match. And then rub out gently your pencil lines, and then and you will still be able to see your pencil crayon outline, and then you'll be able to start painting. I'm going to paint、um, to one of pen, so it's nice and clear on the video, and you can see clearly what we're doing. Don't worry if you make a mistake; just put the correction line in, leave the mistake there, put the correct line in where you want it to be、um, with your pencil, and before you start painting, you rub you when you rub out, you need to rub out all the mistakes. Don't rub out now. So I'm going to start with his eye down here, and his body's going to come up, and he's, we're going to leave lots of space for his tail and his fins. All right, we're going to be using lots of curved lines today, but we're going to start off with a nice big eye. So I'm going to draw a nice round circle, not too small. It's kind of the size of my fingernail. Your fingers might be smaller than mine, so just think about that. And I'm going to put another circle around it. And a circle inside, which is going to be my little eye catcher, and I'm going to colour this in on the inside here. So I'm just going to、um, just going to mark it where I want to colour in. I think maybe I'll actually colour it in with black with my watercolours. All right, let's come along this side, and we're going to do a nose. And so it's just. A little stumpy nose like this, and then we can come out and down for where his mouth is going to be. You can see how it's under his eye. We're going to go a curve line that goes up and over. And here, a lot of goldfish almost have these two bumps on his back.、So、it looks a bit strange, but just go stick with me. Okay, this is back. Let's do his mouth. Oh, let's first do his other eye. So we have got this one here. I want to see the other eye. This is one of those goldfish that have got googly eyes. Let's put on his his mouth. That's the curve line. And it's going to come round and up and a curve line. And make a little line mark there, and we're going to do another curve line, and then, and we're going to put in his,、um, we're going to put in his and we're going to put in his gill over here just now, a bit later. All right, let's keep going. We're going to do his top fin here. I've started. And so this is. If you think this is the top of his back, I know it looks a little bit odd. That's the top of his back. We're going to do his top fin, which is going to go back up like that along his back here, and we're just going to do a soft sort of squiggly line that slopes down slightly. All right, you with me? Remember that you can pause the video. You are getting a bit slow. Remember that you can pause the video at any point to go to any place. All right, down here we're going to do his first little fin. It's just a small one, and I like to put a little wrinkle on the side. 
jump under from this line, jump under. And we're going to make this curvy line that goes up. But he's got some fins as we do. So I'm going to jump under his fin so it matches. And I'm going to curve up a little bit. Just a short way. And I'm going to put in his next fin. And this one's a little bit different, it's a bit longer. And I'm going to make it fan out. And it's kind of squarish. Right, I'm going to, I want this curved line now to continue up and it's going to go around his body here. Maybe like that, giving him his nice round tummy. Alright, we're going to do his tail. If here is the top of his tail, I'm going to make this a bit firmer here, this line. It's going to be the top of his tail. I want to mark out this gap between his tail joins his body. So I'm going to put that line there. So I've got a proper gap there. And then I'm going to join this line up to his body after. Alright, he's starting to take shape. Let's put on his big tail. Before we do his other last fins, we want to make sure that his main tail really gets the space it needs. So I'm going to do a big um, one coming up and one swooping down. And remember, we've spoken about how the how we use our curved lines can really tell a story and and show the movement of something. So be particularly thoughtful now of how you're going to use your curved lines. All right, he's got his tail. Let's put this one on. I'm going to make this a little bit longer. And it comes out from here. Back. And this joint. Just with a random sort of squeaky line. Okay. Right, he's also got another fin down here. So under here where we've got this joint in his body. I'm just going to put another sort of thinner one. And I think we'll probably be able to see the other one here as well. These ones you'll see are on the other side of his body, so we can't really see them. Okay, let's put a few more details on. Let's put in his gills. So this is a bit of a funny shape, but we want to come in here with a few curved lines. So I'm going to do one curved line. And then round the edge. And another curved line. Coming a bit closer. And then I'm going to do another sort of squiggly curve line that comes in. And you can see it's not perfectly straight. He's also got some more markings around his face, which I thought was nice to put in. And also, again, these lines don't have to be perfect. They can be probably different on each fish. Okay, we're going to put in a last detail, last two details. We're going to put in a little dotted line that goes along his body here. So from above his eye, we're going to draw a line. And you can draw a line with your pencil, curving with the shape of his body around, and then curving this way. You can imagine his body is curving this way, and his tail is curving that way. And we are going to put a little row of dots. So you can draw your curved line first in pencil. And then you can follow the dots along with the guideline that you have drawn. I'm just going to go for it. There we go. Okay. Right. If at any point now you'd like to do any corrections, you can. Um, you can also take now your pencil crown and go over this main um, outline with your pencil crown. Rub out your pencil gently. Be careful, remember to support your paper so that your paper doesn't get wrinkled up and scrunched up while you're erasing. And you are going to be left with a fine pencil crown outline. Or if you're using a pen like me, then you can, you can go over it with pen and then erase your, your lines, that's also fine. I want you to pause the video and do that if you need to. And then we're going to carry on with his fins straight into our pencil crown.
Okay, so if I'm using, you should be using a pencil or a pen now, whatever you've used, you are using that. And we are going to draw the last details on his fins. So again, we've spoken about how curved lines can really talk. They can really speak the way that we use them. A curved line, if I just use my scrap paper, two curved lines that follow each other exactly is very static. Static means it's standing still. Where if I have curved lines that are coming close and further apart from each other and they are changing and going with the flow, that is got a lot more movement, which is what we want. So we're going to put on the lines on his or his his fins. You're gonna I'm gonna fast forward this part, but I want you to be thoughtful about where you're putting your lines. A final tip before I fast forward is with these big spaces, do a few little groups of lines along your shape so that it's split up into different areas so that you can find your way as you're going. There's no wrong or right way to do this. Doesn't matter if your lines overlap or touch each other. Now it will be easier to fill in each space and changing the direction of your curved line as you go. So if I do that here as well. And I think we are starting, we are in. And I'm changing the direction. boys and girls um, what's lovely about these lines is they're going far apart and then coming closer they really add a lot of sort of our, our brain start reading this as darker shades and curves and shadows and so don't worry if your lines are overlapping or touching each other it really adds you might be able to see here I put fewer lines here um, so you can do lots or, or fewer and sometimes I even left a bigger space and that just adds to the variety and the, the movement.